Hi there, my name is Ms. Townsend and I love math. Welcome to Math with Townsend. This is the Grade 9 Academic Analytic Geometry Summative and it's question 5. So in case you're wondering about this, the original question 5 video that I posted had an error in it which someone pointed out to me. Um, so obviously I need to redo question 5 to make it right for you. So here's what question 5 says. It says if the point of intersection of the lines blah, 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 and blah, 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 is also on the line, da, 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 find the value of k. So we've seen a number of questions involving k. So just a reminder, k is an unknown number. It's something that we need to solve for. And when you're working with an equation like this that has a k in it, you treat k just like you would a number. So it's a number and we just don't know it yet. So let's look at this question and figure out what we need to do. It says the point of intersection of these lines, I'll call this line 1, I'll call this line 2. So these two lines intersect somewhere at a point. And that point is also on this line, we'll call it line 3. So I'm thinking we need to find that point of intersection. So somewhere, line 1 and line 2 intersect. And that point is important for helping us find k. So how do we find the point of intersection between two lines? Well, you're in grade 9, so the best method we have is to graph those lines. Uh, by the way, your first unit in grade 10 math will be learning other methods for finding points of intersection. For now, though, we need to figure out how to graph. So here's a line, line number one, and we want to graph it. So for line number one, we're going to use this method. And that's the method where you rearrange the equation into slope-intercept form. You plot the y-intercept, and then you do the slope rise over run. That means I need to rearrange the equation. So I'm going to isolate the y term, negative 3y. The x becomes negative x, and the 8, well, it's fine where it was. I'm going to divide everything by negative 3 to isolate the y once and for all. Oops. Oopsie. Don't want that. Um, so I'm dividing everything by negative 3. And now I'm going to clean up this math. So I get 1 over 3x minus 8 over 3. Um, so just to make sure everyone's comfortable with what I did from here to here, this really says negative 1x. So that negative and this negative cancel, and I'm left with 1 over 3. And I don't like writing x in a slope fraction. I prefer to see x as its own entity. So there we go. That's line 1 written in slope-intercept form. So we know that we have a slope that says to rise 1 and run 3. And we have a y-intercept at 0, comma, negative 8 over 3. And we'll worry about graphing that in a second. For now, let's start talking about what we're going to do with line number 2. So line number 2 says 2x minus y equals 6. And I'm just going to double check. I got that right. 2x minus y equals 6. Yay. So how are we going to graph this one? Well, we could do the same thing we did last time, but let's review another method for graphing lines, and that's to find the x and y intercepts. And when you find the x and y intercepts, you have two points. Two points connect with your ruler, make a line. So to find an x-intercept, you let y be 0. So 2x minus 0, well, that seems like a waste of ink. 2x minus 0 is just 2x. So I'm left with 2x equals 6. Solve for x. That gives me an x-intercept right there at 3, 0. To find a y-intercept, you let x equal 0. x times 2 is 0. Well, 0 times 2 is 0. So really, I'm left with negative y equals 6. So y equals negative 6. So there's my y-intercept. So x-intercept, y-intercept, I can graph that line. So let's do that. So I'll use my fancy technology to give us a nice grid like this. 
and make sure I label the grid properly with an X here and a Y here. And I'm going to start by graphing line number two. And again, that means I'm going to put a dot at my X intercept and a dot at my Y intercept and connect them with a ruler. So there's my X intercept, three, zero. There's my Y intercept, zero, negative six. And this is as good as I can get for a ruler, some sort of nice blue line. And it's all right, but I tell you, some things are really easy to do in real life. So bear with me while I adjust this line to be slightly more nice. There, good enough. And as always, let's label. This is line number two. Um, and just don't worry about these little weird boxes at the end. Pretend that it's a giant arrow. Yay, giant arrow. Okay, let's talk about line number one. Line number one has a y-intercept at zero, negative eight over three. So that's definitely sort of weird because it's not a lattice point. Remember lattice point? We love lattice points. They're the points that lie exactly on the crosshairs of your grid line, so you know exactly their coordinates. Well, this one's not a lattice point. But it's still a point that I can graph. I just have to be really careful about estimating where that would be. Negative 8 over 3 is pretty darn close to negative 2.7. So I'm going to eyeball that point on my graph. Um, let's use green this time. So negative two, here's negative one, negative two. So negative two and two thirds is like here-ish. Oops. And again, pretty close. Then I have to do slope. Now slope says to go up one and run three. So again, be careful. Up one means I'm now here and then run three right about here. And I'm being careful, as careful as I can, because I need to use the information I get from my graph. So I'm trying to be careful. Um, and then let's draw that line. So this time we'll take a lovely green line. And again, I'm going to try to connect the points. Oh, pretty good. Nice one, Miss Townsend. <laughs> so there's line number one. And our, what were we doing again? We were trying to find the intersection, right? Well, let's look at the graph. I found it. So the intersection is very definitely right about here. So now, even though my graph wasn't perfect, that sure looks like it's a point right here. So I would think I'm going to be pretty good if I think that that point is at 2, negative 2, because I graphed pretty carefully, and that looks pretty reasonable. So that's the point of intersection. Oops, my pen is acting up a little bit. There. So now I know the point of intersection between my two lines. And what did I want to do with them? Let's clear some of this mess up here. Right. That point that I just found is on line one, it's on line two, and it's also on line three. So let's take line three. So line three is kx. And this is where I messed up before. So I'm being extra careful that I don't mess this up. Plus 5y minus 12 equals 0. One more double check. Again, I don't like making the same mistake twice. Learn from your mistakes, right? So this is line number 3. And now we know, now we know that the point 2, negative 2, is on this line. What does that mean? Well, it means that if I let x be 2 and y be negative 2, then I have a point on this line. And I'm going to do exactly that. You do a substitution for x and y, 
and that will allow you to solve for k. So it all comes down to algebra. So I'm going to let x be 2. I'm going to let y be negative 2. And I'm just going to do my math. Oops. Again, sometimes the pen doesn't like me, but that's OK. Sometimes I don't like the pen. This was negative 2, and that was an equal sign. So let's do the math. k times 2 is 2k. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. Minus 12 equals 0. So 2k minus 22 equals 0. 2k equals positive 22. k equals 11. I solved for k. So let's make sure we know what we did. We know that the point of intersection of the first two lines is the point 2, negative 2. And now we know that that point is also on the third line, which means that the k value must be 11. Solved for k, all done correctly this time.